Uh, my name is Teddy, I host a show called Inner Space on the Space Channel, and uh, it's been an amazing weekend for us. Uh, my favorite part of coming to Fan Expo, uh, other than meeting all of you, is, uh, is getting to do this, is moderating uh, panels, these Q's and A's, uh, because first and foremost, I'm a fan just like you, and so getting to, uh, getting to do this is a real, real highlight. And of all the highlights, this would definitely be near the top of those highlights, because I'm about to bring out your guest, who of course, you know, it's tough to find somebody who's as influential um, or pivotal in the world of current sci-fi. She's had so many amazing roles, of course, amongst them, Samantha Carter, who started as she And of course, Helen Magnus from a little show called Tapping walked out, and, and this happened. <laughs> now, is that awkward when you wake up in the morning and they're at the end of your bed? <laughs> doing that? Yeah, yeah. but it gets me out of bed in the morning, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so awesome that you're here. How's your expo been so far? Awesome. Oh, this has been so great. You guys, uh, uh, what an amazing crowd. And everyone's been so friendly and so gracious. And I even got to hug a couple of babies, so that rocks. <laughs> uh, yeah, what an amazing group of people. I'm so glad to finally come back to my hometown. <laughs> Not surprisingly, there's already a big lineup. So the way we're going to do it, just so you know, is we're going to have you li line up there on the left, but so you don't obscure people's view here. Uh, uh, we're going to just take you at the mic right here. So if you if you get in position, uh, but I want to ask you first. This is like a question that I think like David Frost would ask who's okay. interviewing you. This kind of a Frost thing. So, Wilson tapping. Um, of course, you're known for a lot of great roles, but Sam Carter and Helen Magnus are at dinner together. What do they talk about? I want to know how the dinner discussion between Sam Carter and Helen Magnus would go. They talk about a boy named Jack. I have a Jack, but really I have a Jack too. Would they get along? Oh yeah. Yeah, they definitely get along. Yeah, I, it might come down to an arm wrestle by the end of the evening, but they get along. Who wins in the arm wrestle? Oh! Magnus! Magnus! Yes. What you said. <laughs> I told you I was going to do I'm going to pour you a cup of water, and I was a, a terrible bartender. I have my smart serve, so I'm authorized to do He's this. He's authorized to pour me water yeah, and you monitor my intake. I'm going to monitor your intake. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, so let's open it to the floor. Hello, sir. Hello. Well, first of all, I just wanted to say that if I ever have a daughter, I want to be certain that she sees your work so that she'll have a strong female role model in the media. <laughs> Next, my question. Uh, Christopher Judge, uh, Joe Flanagan, Jason Momoa, uh, Robin Dunn, you've worked with quite a few pranksters. And Joe was actually just lamenting the other day of how difficult it is to ruffle your feathers and how he was never able to do it. That's so not true. <laughs> and that's what I want to hear about. He called you unflappable. Yeah. That is so funny because I am the first person to break. So on on SG1 it was like it would start and you know, they'd have to yell cut before we got two lines into a scene because I'd be the one laughing and I'd laugh so hard that I'd cry. <laughs> and then Robin can just look at me sideways and it's like, forget it. Cut, cut, just cut, cut. And nine times out of ten, it's during his coverage. <laughs> so, yeah, so that Joe said I'm unflappable is pretty intense, man. That is so not true. <laughs> yeah, he's a 
a clap. No, he giggles a little bit. <laughs> this is <sugar. laughs> It's a really a like handsome giggle when he does it, though, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. His hair stays in place. No, it doesn't move ever. <laughs> You guys could wake him up in the morning and his hair would look exactly the same. So as a director, when you're working with uh, actors who are, who are flappable, who break, break up on set, I mean, I'm sure you've, you've acted with a lot of them, so do you, how do you come down on them for doing that when they've seen you on set and they know how flappable you are? I, yeah, it's all right, yeah. <laughs> when I was directing Veritas, I was in the show and uh, I, lost it on set one day with this terrible case of the giggles and so and it was robin's coverage of course and i'm off camera and all i have to do is hug him but you see my back on camera and i couldn't stop giggling and i so i fired myself as well. yeah. i made myself write a letter of apology to myself awesome uh next up at the microphone hello hi hi uh first of all i apologize for I apologize for hugging before asking. <laughs> Secondly, and this is kind of a two-pronged question, and I apologize if it's making things serious ahead of time, but you're one of the first women to produce a show in Canada and to do one independently, which was then taken on by uh, the Sci-Fi Channel. And there's a lot of ageism in Hollywood and in casting in general, and I'm wondering how you felt when the show was taken over by Sci-Fi, um, how that influenced writing and your producing, and whether or not you felt kind of the gendered effects of the system working? Well, what's interesting is that's a great question. We, we were an acquisition for sci-fi. So although they did have some influence on aspects of the show in terms of giving notes on the script and on, on edits, they didn't take it over in the sense that it was their show. Uh, they actually provided a very small percentage of our budget, like 10% of our budget came from sci-fi. Um, what was interesting was um, trying to mitigate really the Canadian network and the US network and the producers. And we generally had a pretty seamless um, connection, but occasionally the Canadians would ask for one thing, the US would ask for something else, and, and then we'd be stuck in the middle. The only time that it became a real issue for me with sci-fi was when they changed our logo from what we had from the webisodes with the filigree and which I thought was just a beautiful logo and kind of we branded it and it was very sanctuary to this kind of steel lettering that they ended up doing. And they did it in spite of us saying, no, we don't want you to change the logo, and then they did. And it's the only time, okay, no, that's a lie. It's one of the only <laughs> times that I really kind of lost it as a producer. And I called our the head of the network for our show and freaked out. And I guess when your lead actress and the executive producer calls, it's kind of serious. I didn't think of it that way. I was just like so upset. But of course I hung up that I was like, you can't do that. You can't change it. We have branded this. We are proud of this show. And you can't, you don't even give us enough money to change the brand of our rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and I'm saying this to like somebody quite influential. <laughs> and oh, calm down. And this is why we did it. And you got under the data. You know, and it, was a, it, was a, it was an okay conversation, but of course at the end of it, I hung up and Martin and Damien were like, <laughs> and they said, wow, good for you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah it feels really good. To <laughs> 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 uh, did you do a dramatic up. hang up and everything? No, so that, no, that, not at all. <laughs> no, because it's a push button. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, there's a misperception that sci-fi had taken over the show. They were, in, they were essential in terms of getting us picked up again for every season because we needed a U.S. broadcaster in order for our financers to feel comfortable moving forward. So, hence the lack of season five. But they, it wasn't, a, it wasn't their show, per se. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you create, keep creating older female characters on this game. Thank you. <laughs> big inspiration to me, especially with playing Sam Carter and getting to play many different things within Stargate, such as the Togra, a replicator, getting the computer taking over your mind. My question for you as is... As you do. <laughs> uh, my question for you is, 
what was the most fun to portray and what was the most difficult thing to portray in Stargate? The most fun was um, uh, uh, the alternate reality, Carter and Daniel. That was nice. <laughs> Worked out. We had so much fun. And then it was kind of no holds barred, and it was Peter Deloise directing. So he's like, put on these life jackets because they look even stupider. <laughs> so that was by far the most fun. Um, that version of Carter. Replica Carter was hard only because of the physicality was slightly different, and I wanted there to be enough of a difference that it was noticeable without being too robotic with her. So that was just a more nuanced, if you will. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Amanda. Hi. I'd like to know, um, between Carter and Magnus, what elements of Amanda did you bring into these characters? Wow. Uh, very good question. Thank you. Um, other than screaming at people on the phone. Other than yelling. <laughs> well, like, twice. Uh, Carter was a very well-written character initially in terms of her credentials. But I felt that they wrote a very uh, man writing a woman character as in evidence by certain lines in the pilot. <laughs> Make sure I don't need to remind you what those are, but that's reproductive organs. <laughs> and so it was after the pilot when I knew that my job was secure that I was able to go up and say, you know what, women don't actually talk like this. <laughs> Never have I used the gender argument in that way, uh, if I've ever even used it. But also, you know, and I said, just write, write as if you're writing for a man, and I'll bring a certain inherent femininity to it, simply by virtue of my gender, but also hopefully because I'm somewhat feminine. <laughs> I got an argument. Uh, the other thing that, that happened in, uh, before we even shot the pilot, uh, uh, and I've told this story before, but there was one executive from the studio who wanted Carter to wear a very low-cut tank top and uh, a push-up bra. And so I went, I just arrived in Vancouver, we'd had our cast read through, it was super exciting, I went for my wardrobe fitting, and I had been told I'd be wearing black t-shirts and army fatigues and boots, and I was like, awesome. And then there was this tank top and push-up bra, and I looked at the costume designer and I said, what, the what? <laughs> and she said, yeah, well, we just, you know, so we can take some pictures for the executives. They just want to see if this is the way they want to go with the character. And I was like, you can't. You can't go this way with it. This is a smart, strong, very capable woman. If you make it about her boobs, you've completely lost. Like, she's military. You can't come on. And, uh, but it was my first real big gig, and I didn't want to blow it. But I, I kind of had to, that was, that was really where Amanda Tapping First, like stood her ground, and I refused to put it on. I don't like confrontation, so of course I burst into tears. <laughs> I said, if they want me to put this on, they have to come downstairs and tell me why, and we can have the argument about who this character really is. And if they're insistent that this is what they want her to be, then they've cast the wrong person, because I. Brad Wright and Jonathan Glasner and those guys were awesome. And I guess Christina went and phoned and just said she's not going to do it. And she came back and said, don't worry about it. It's all good. Just put on the t-shirt. And I was like, Whoa. <laughs> And, you know, unless it was sort of a story point, there was very few times that Carter was really kind of sexy unless it was specific to a story point. But um, otherwise, the day-to-day -day Carter that you know and hopefully enjoy is... is sexy anyway. The way that was one of the major influences, I feel. And I don't know whether it would have continued, whether they like, had me try on this tank top and would have gone, no, oh, this is stupid. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, and I just feel like um, my coming into my own as a woman happened sort of at the same time as Carter's in terms of the evolution. We had really amazing writers on that show and they really listened to the actors' voices and they had a very clear idea of what they wanted the characters to be. So um, I credit them more than I credit myself in terms of how Sam turned out. 
but it sort of it became a very symbiotic relationship between Sam and I. Um, with Helen, I had more of an influence because we were developing her right from the start. But again, I credit the writing, which was Damien Kindler, who wrote this phenomenal female character. And then really, it was just a matter of bringing my own physicality to her. And there was a lot of discussions about how we were going to play her and what, what we wanted her to be like. And so, and again, I feel like I was ready to play Helen Magnus. I wouldn't have been ready 15 years ago to play Helen Magnus, but I was ready now to play her. So, hope that answers your question. <laughs>